Okay, uh, very good. So, um, all right, maybe uh, welcome everybody. So let me start with a few words to introduce our speaker this afternoon, who is Benoit Pertam. So uh, he's, um, as you all know, is a professor of mathematics at Sorbonne Université. Uh, he's authored many major contributions in the theory of PDEs, in particular, uh, the theory of kinetic formulations for hyperbolic conservation laws, and more recently, uh, mathematical modeling of various problems in biology, uh, on tumor growth, uh, chemotherapy, self-organization of cells, bacteria, chemotaxis. So <clears throat> Benoit has taught for several years at Ecole Normale Supérieure in Paris, and he has mentored many outstanding uh, French mathematicians, including Pierre-Emmanuel uh, Jabin, who's currently with us, and an editor of uh, Sample and Mathematical Analysis. So uh, Benoit's exceptional achievements have been recognized with several awards. Uh, the Peco Lecture at Collège de France in uh, 1990 on his uh, first approach to kinetic schemes, and more recently, plenary lectures at the 2011 ICIM in Vancouver and the 2014 ICM in Seoul. So he's uh, since 2017 a member of the French Academy of Science. Benoit, whenever you want, you start. All right, thank you very much, uh, Francois, and uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to give uh, this talk in this uh, new situation. So this talk will be around the uh, question of modeling of living tissues and uh, two points of view, compressible and incompressible. Uh, which lead to a, a free, free surface problem, which is called LA show. So just to begin with and to explain uh, a little bit uh, what is going on, uh, I would like to, to, to mention uh, that the question of describing a living tissue uh, is extremely active now in, uh, in sciences, not only in mathematics, uh, in uh, physics and in uh, mechanics, there are many people involved in the, in the topic. Uh, and of course, they have, uh, this is close to elasticity, to, 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 to solid mechanics, to fluid mechanics. And so it's, uh, it's also a place where mathematical models are, uh, are, are present and so there are many mathematicians working out of it. So if I, I can uh, give a, a simple concept, which is recent, is uh, that there is a notion of pressure in the living tissues, uh, just like there is a notion of pressure in trees. It's not exactly coming from the same uh, mechanics at the beginning, but it plays the same role. And uh, finally, people agree now that uh, the living tissue is uh, some kind of fluid and it's a multi-phase fluid. Uh, you have here a small uh, cartoon of what is, uh, what is a living tissue. Uh, so the living tissue is maintained by, a, by what is called an extracellular matrix. If you want long fibers, uh, long biopolymers, which maintain the tissue. And uh, around that, you have different types of cells. Uh, so living cells, dead cells, proliferative cells, quiescent cells, and maybe different types of cells, the immune system and, uh, and other cells of the organ. And in between, uh, there is a liquid, interstitial, interstitial fluid, which is like, uh, just like water. And of course, in this water, you have the molecules uh, most of the signaling uh, in, within living tissue is done by, uh, by, diff by move motion, division of, of, of molecules in this fluid. So because of that, uh, the modeling has been changed completely. If uh, you go back uh, to the maybe 10 or 20 years ago, mathematical models uh, would be basically like models in ecology where you think there is a carrying capacity and this carrying capacity is controlled by the nutrients uh, which arrive in the, in the tissue. Uh, right now, uh, the, uh, the notion 
of uh, carrying capacity is more or less uh, no longer present in, in, in recent papers. And you have a notion of pressure, and pressure controls uh, the death and the pro proliferation of cells uh, through what is called uh, contact inhibition, uh, which makes that if the pressure is too high, uh, cells will sense it and stop dividing. I have put here a picture of a, mo of a recent paper by a, a colleague from the Curie Institute, a physicist uh, uh, from the Curie Institute, who have been very far and show that uh, increasing the pressure artificially, you can create cancer in, uh, in mice. So at this stage, I would like to say that I'm, I will do mathematics. This will be theorems and uh, an analysis. Uh, I would like, like to just to, to, to mention that behind that, uh, there are people who are using these kind of models, uh, using images, for example, and doing predictions uh, in medicine. There are, uh, there are startups uh, using uh, this technology. And I've given here uh, two examples. One is from a team in, in Bordeaux in France, uh, where they use, and what you see on this screen, by the way, are real images from patients. So they use uh, images from patients uh, to predict what is the growth of a tumor and to, and to decide of the best treatment to do. Uh, and of course, when they do that, they do it with the full biology that you have to put in these models. It's uh, very complicated. You need to, of course, to put many uh, different types of cells. What I said, you have to put uh, nutrients, how they access, how do you, what is the vasculature which brings the nutrients. Uh, nowadays, it's very clear that the immune system is very important in, in, in cancer development. So all this is true. And here I have put another example of, uh, of people doing the same thing. They have images from real tissue and their models that are able to fit exactly to the, to the data. So these things are now mat mature in the sense uh, that they are used in practice, uh, either in medicine or in, uh, in biology uh, to understand what is going on. So what, uh, what I do, in fact, there are different schools still working on that using different models. Uh, I will try to present a little bit of these equations. Uh, mostly they are either Canillard type equations, four folder uh, uh, equations, or parabolic hyperbolic equations, coupled parabolic hyperbolic equations. And out of this uh, type of, pro of models, uh, what you want to know. Uh, are of course, because we are mathematicians, you want to know whether there are solutions, there are very nonlinear problems. So you want to know if uh, there are solutions, are they smooth or not? The, there are many different models, so you like to, would like to understand the relations between the models, and so what are the limits in the assumptions uh, to use the models. And uh, of course, you also want to, to compared to, to experiments, I, I've shown it before. Uh, a typical question there is the, the tissue, uh, are the cells uh, which are forming the tissue, will they segregate or will they mix uh, in a, like, in a, uh, like in a mixture? So there, do you see fronts or do you have an homogeneity in the tissue? Uh, and this you can observe in, uh, in experiments. In biology, you see that this can happen. Uh, well, a few months ago, we were speaking with medical doctors working on immunotherapy and telling us that uh, even immunotherapy for cancer will work if the, 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 the immune cells will be able to go in the tumor so to create an homogeneous tissue. But in many cases, they will be uh, blocked in front like that, so they will not be able to act within the tissue. And uh, this is uh, the case where, the, where immunotherapy cannot be used. So these are the type of questions uh, that you find. So very quickly, uh, to, to, to 
to be to present all the models. Uh, the first type of equations which are used by a number of people, and all these, by the way, began in the US with uh, Wise and uh, Lovengrub and all the team around them, uh, where they use uh, Canelia type of equations. Uh, these are Canelia equations with uh, tangential C that makes uh, the interest and the difficulty of the models. So, uh, so you have a, a mobility or what I call P just to have unified notation in the talk, uh, which come from a potential. Uh, so P is a W prime of C, which is a potential. And you have this uh, surface tension uh, term in the, in the model. Uh, but this is multiplied by a motility which is degenerate both in C equal zero and C equal one. So here, when you sp use Canelliard equation or a single Canelliard equation, you speak of a concentration of cells. So you think that there is, a, let's say, tumor cells, which I will call N1, and there are another type of, uh, of phase. Uh, you can think of all the, the other uh, uh, cells and liquid in the, in the tissue. So you only describe a proportion of cells in the, in the tissue by this kind of yard equation with the degeneracy, which is, uh, which is uh, the difficulty. And of course, this term, this degeneracy term, makes that the solutions are quite different from the usual Canillard equation where you take this equal to one. So this is a kind of equation that uh, many people are using uh, in, the, in that area. And these are models, but I will, which are used in one of the pictures I showed uh, earlier. In this model here, this is a group of uh, Politecnico di Milano. They, they use Canigliard equation to produce this. Uh, of course, I think that uh, most of you are aware of another kind of model, which are aggregation equations, which are also used in this uh, in this topic by uh, with systems of cells. You have put only one just to make it simple. And uh, this is just to take into account. So you have an aggregation equation, mean that uh, you have a you have a you have a potential U and a convolution, which uh, mean that the uh, the cells can interact in the long range. And uh, this is uh, to to take into account uh, that the cells can have uh, yes can uh, can uh, can have interactions which are much further than their. Uh, than the, the, their, uh, their body. But again, some raw arms or molecules uh, to bind uh, further. And they have also random motion. So these are classical models. I think uh, this began with uh, Painter and Sherat. Uh, Bertozzi and Laurent have been using that for other purposes. Uh, and now uh, the group in uh, Imperial College and Oxford now, by the way, have been very active on that. Uh, certainly you have heard uh, the talks on the rosé on, on, this, uh, on these things. Uh, the advantage of these uh, models is that they're very, very closely related to individual-based models. So you can, uh, you can make directly the link with other type of, uh, of, uh, of modeling, which are even at a, at a smaller scale, at the cell scale. Uh, and this picture that I showed earlier is an example of, uh, of models which are in between this uh, uh, IBM and this uh, aggregation equations. So the model uh, I will speak about today are, uh, are a little bit different. Uh, they are also connected to all of this and uh, they take the following form. They are parabolic equations in some sense. So you consider, let's say, two types of cells and uh, in this mechanical view, you, you say that the pressure is uh, controlling the velocity. So you see, in some sense, what you say that the, uh, the cells, when they divide, they, create, they increase the pressure because they, they increase their volume by taking uh, nutrients and they push the other cells. So you have uh, some kind of motion, which is, uh, uh, which is due to this, uh, to this pressure flow. Uh, according to Tarsis rule, and so you get uh, just a system of two equations, which uh, you can think of a parabolic uh, coupling of parabolic and hyperbolic equations. Uh, 
uh, of course, uh, cells interact. So you have seen that in the previous models, there is always interaction. So you can, uh, you can model that by your right hand side terms, which are important because they create the, they create the growth of the tissue and they control the dynamics of the tissue. Uh, one of the, uh, of the observation uh, that uh, are due, I think, to Bern and Drasdow uh, first, based on numerical simulation, uh, which has been shown to be true by, uh, by a group of physicists with experiments, uh, where they, uh, they really show that this is a correct point of view, is that all the right-hand side are Latka Volterra types, these are rates, F, F1, F2, G1, G2, are rates of division, and they are controlled by the pressure. So this is uh, what I called contact inhibition. The, the cell division is not really, is not mainly controlled by, by, by nutrient. We'll come back to that later and we'll see that they are important. But the first uh, control is by pressure of the, of the, of the cells. The cells have ways to, to sense uh, pressure and to say that, that they want to be divide faster or slower uh, behind that. And uh, by the way, this physicist uh, came uh, with a beautiful name, which is homeostatic pressure, which is the maximum pressure that you can impose to a, flu to a tissue. If you go above, the tissue cells will begin to, to, to stop dividing. So this, is, this has to do with homeostasis, where uh, when an organ, which has reached the correct size, measured by pressure, will stop dividing and uh, it will be ad, uh, as obtained its final form. So in the compressible model, which I'm speaking about here, uh, the pressure uh, is supposed to be connected to the cell density. So cell density in this model will be N1 plus N2. Uh, it's a big problem to know what is uh, the, the pressure law for a living tissue. So the simplest is to take a uh, the uh, uh, power law, gamma. Uh, it is, of course, true, wrong. Uh, it seems that even physicists have no way uh, to, to measure this pressure to, 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 to see what is this uh, pressure law. So for us, it will be just an homogeneous uh, pressure law, which makes this very close to, 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 to the porous medium equation. So, so, so the compressible model, as usual, as you all know that, is a place where the cell density N1 and N2 are free and simply the pressure is directly connected to the cell density. In fact, people who are using these models and particularly those people in, uh, in Bordeaux, but this is true also from Maini and Friedman and all the groups doing that, they don't use a compressible model. They use incompressible model saying that the cell density, the total cell density is one so N1 plus N2 is one. And if you add up uh, the two equation, assuming that N1 plus N2 is one, what you observe is that the the, when you add up, the time derivative will disappear because time derivative of one is zero. When you have, add up the divergence term, N1 plus N2 will be one. So you get a Laplacian F for this term. And on the right hand side, you have a combination of the two, which I which depends on N1 and N2, but uh, N1 and N2 being co compared, co connected by this relation in one plus N2 equal one. So this is, uh, this is uh, the compressi incompressible model uh, for, the, for the tumor growth. And of course, it's better to use that because you don't, you don't uh, ask the question of the pressure law. You compute the pressure by this equation. So you just have to compute the pressure. When you know the pressure, you can compute N1, N2, or simply N1 and N2 will come out from that. And that's it. So you don't need to ask what is the pressure law in this incompressible model, which is a big advantage in terms of uh, computing. Of course, this is true as long as, uh, as uh, the, the fluid is unsaturated, is saturated. Uh, there is a zone uh, where you can imagine that N is less than one. N1 plus N2 is not, doesn't reach one. And this is the free boundary. So mathematically, of course, it is an interesting part. Uh, what happens if 
uh, in the zone where this is not true and what happens at the interface where n equal not equal to one. So that's what I wanted to understand uh, and to uh, and also to understand what is the connection with the compressible model. So how do you go from this compressible model to the incompressible model? Can, what can you prove? So first of all, uh, I will speak already with a single equation. Before going to system, let's go back to the simple situation of a single equation. I will show you that the basic tool to prove the incompressible limit is the aronson benillian estimate, which is an old estimate, a very nice estimate, which is very useful. And then we can go to, to multi-species. So for a single equation, because things become very simple. So you have a single type of cell, let's say called the tumor cells, uh, which are moving with a velocity which is minus grad p. But in that case, p is just n to the power gamma with our assumption that the pressure law is, uh, is homogeneous. And on the right hand side, you have this growth term, which is here. So the model is very simple. If you ignore the right hand side, uh, the grad P is n to the gamma, you recover that you have here simply the prose medium equation. So very simple. Only the right hand side is changing a little bit the game. Uh, in practice, the right hand side, the growth term that you want to do here is a decreasing function because when the pressure is really little, cells want to divide. When you increase the pressure, you, go, you get uh, this homeostatic pressure, so PM, which is the maximum pressure that you can give before uh, cells die. So the mathematics is very simple, very well known. It's a, uh, just a right uh, modification of the right of the Perus medium equation. You have the following properties. So you know that cell solutions will be non-negative, that the pressure will be controlled by the maximum pressure if it is true initially. Uh, you have control in N1, and in the Perus medium equation, of course, you have control in BV. So you know that if the initial data is uh, BV, then it's true for all time with maybe an exponential growth here because of the right hand side. But that's not a big deal. Uh, this gives you uh, compactness if you want in space. You need a compactness in time. One way to see it is to say that uh, if you initially you have a subsolution, DTN0 is positive, non negative, then DTN is non negative. All this is flowing from the from the theory of a plus-medium equation. Of course, nobody likes this, est uh, this, est this estimate, but we have an interpretation. If a, if, a mod if, a, uh, if a tumor is growing initially with this model, it will never stop growing. That's what he says, so, which is ob so obviously wrong. And I will show you why it's completely wrong and so why the model is too simple. But in any case, uh, it is, can be improved and uh, you don't need uh, this uh, subsolution initially to prove compactness, you get an estimate, which is the aronson benillon estimate, which tells you that whatever is initial data, DTN is always greater or equal to a constant, uh, which should be one over gamma, by the way, uh, T. So it blows up at T equals zero, because at T equals zero, it has uh, to be minus infinity. You don't control anything on DTN multiply by a right hand side, which is an exponential. And this exponential comes, is uh, exponential of gamma, so the power law, and, and a constant, which depends on the growth term. And so you see here that uh, the growth term is not only uh, just a nonlinearity that you can hide away, uh, which doesn't play a role. The growth term interact with the, with the drift term to create this exponential decay. In the usual porous medium equation, Rg equals zero, you don't have an exponential decay. You have just a power decay, one over t. Min uh, yes, one over t for this, uh, for this expression. Here you win an exponential decay because of the interaction between the g and the gamma, so and the pressure. So the mathematics is quite easy. The aronson benillon estimate I will show you in a couple of minutes how it works. Uh, it's quite easy also. Uh, but when you look at solutions, 
uh, solutions are not so, so easy at all to understand. So what, this is what you see. So in black, you have the, 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 the cell density. In blue, the pressure. You see at the beginning, the pressure here in that part was completely negligible. Then you, the, the pressure builds up. You create interfaces to, to free boundary, if you want, which are moving. At some point, some point the, they can join and then create a discontinuity in the pressure. So the pressure is always uh, smooth in space um, on, this, uh, on, this, uh, on this movie, uh, but can have a sudden uh, change in shape. And that's what you want to explain. Why are solutions like that? Why are they so complicated? Why do you have, uh, do you have this, uh, these patterns? So to, to do that and to explain that, uh, I will need to explain first what is the aronson benilon estimate. So if you go back to the Bose medium equation that you write a dTn minus uh, divergence n grad p equals zero, uh, if uh, you, uh, if you uh, write it in terms of the pressure, and it's very well known that pressure is a good, is a good quantity for the Bose medium equation, you get uh, some kind of uh, Hamilton-Jacobi equation, some kind of econal equation. So what uh, Aronson Benignan proposed is to use as a variable the Laplacian of P, W, and so the equation is very simple. It's DTP equal grad P squared plus gamma PW, and they noticed that uh, you can write more or less a self-contained equation on W. So if you compute the second derivative of this, you will get these two terms coming from the grad P squared and the gamma terms, which come from here. So when you make a double derivative, for example, of the P, you will get a gamma squared, and then you will get other terms. If you make a double derivative of Laplace P, you will get a Laplace W here. And from this inequality, uh, from this equality, you get an inequality. The, the, this term controls, of course, uh, the, uh, the uh, is control from below is a positive term. It's nice, you can neglect it if you want. And uh, if you neglect it, you get this inequality here. So just neg neglecting this, but you can keep it. You can get a better estimate if you keep it, but no. For us, it will be the same. So you see that W satisfies an equation in the strong form. You have a, 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 a maximum principle plus a term gamma W squared. And of course, gamma W squared create a blow up, which means that Laplace P will blow up in finite time. You will get singularities. That's what you expect. These are the singularities you have in porous medium equation, barren blood solutions and, uh, uh, and others. And uh, from below, it has a regularizing effect. And this is uh, the aronson benignan estimate. They say, okay, W uh, can increase, but from below, this term is regularizing, and uh, minus one of a gamma T is a subsolution. So W is larger, the solution is larger than the subsolution. It's a subsolution because it doesn't depend on X. So the, these terms uh, are zero for this, uh, this subsolution, minus one of a gamma T. So very simple argument that uh, this uh, term regularizes. So if you add now a growth term, it doesn't change so much the thing. The pressure equation is the same thing, except now you have gamma p in terms of, in front of Laplace p plus g of p. It's a, more or less the same equation. If you want to mimic uh, the uh, aronson benignan proof, that's what we discovered with uh, Juan Luis Vasquez and Fernando Quiros, the good quantity to take into account is Laplace P plus G of P now. It's no longer Lap, uh, G of, uh, Laplace P. It's, uh, you have to include the G of P. And if you do that, you get an inequality that the DTW again satisfies an equation with a, an operator in a strong form, uh, gamma W squared term plus an extra term, which is uh, coming from the G. But this term is linear in W. And if you think that G prime is, uh, is, is negative uh, and, uh, and G is positive, uh, this term uh, will be positive, which means that it is a good term, which is 
uh, which is uh, attractive. And because of this term, you win the, uh, the exponential decay. So you get the regressing effect by the W squared and you get the exponential decay from this term. So everything is going, is going very well. Again, because uh, this quantity is a subsolution. And because you have a closed form for the equation W except uh, things that you can't call. So how can you use it for the incompressible limit? Okay, first, first of all, so what happens now if you go to the system? So if you go to the system, things become much more complicated. And uh, in opposition to what you could think uh, because of when of adding up the equation, getting a, uh, an equation which looks like the previous one, things are much more complicated. So the, uh, the reason first is that there are no BV bounds uh, on N1, N2, N peak by opposition to the, the single equation, except in 1B. So it cannot prove BV bounds. If you look at the equation on N1 plus NT, indeed you get the Perus medium equation, but this Perus medium equation is not self-contained. It contains N1, N2, and N1, N2 at themselves solution of transport equations. And so all what we said before uh, is collapsing suddenly. So this simple this equation, which seems a very small variant of a Perus medium equation, in fact, it becomes much more complicated. The only a priori bound that you have for free is that uh, the pressure has a gradient in L2. That of course you know that everything is non-negative and that uh, the pressure, uh, the grad P is in L2. That's the only thing and uh, you get also control in L infinity of the pressure. These are the only uh, quantity you control. So there is a story about uh, existence uh, the first papers uh, proving existence go back to, to Michael Birch, Daniel Lilors, Mamie Moura, and other co collaborators. And they, uh, they prove solu solutions are move, uh, smooth if you can impose initially that N1 plus N2 is strictly positive. Uh, so this is a case where the system is not degenerate and they, uh, they have estimates uh, to prove uh, existence. Uh, my attention was brought to the interest of this paper by a, a paper that a Cario wrote with, a, uh, Jose Cario wrote with Sant'Ambrogio and, uh, and Marcus Schmidtchen, uh, where they said, okay, but in 1D, you still have a BV bound. And they noticed, they used cleverly that uh, in 1D, if you look at the fraction, N1 divided by N1 plus N2, you have a strong form for the equation with the same V which is coming from there. And because of that, you have a BV estimate. And so there are many technical difficulties. I present it like a very simple thing, but you want to include the case where N1 plus N2 equals zero. So what all this uh, means, it's, uh, okay, let's forget about all this. Uh, they can prove it and they can prove BV estimate and they, uh, they get it. Uh, and they get a strong solution with, uh, the, that b, the, in the sense that BV bounds are the best you can prove. I mean, there can't be interface uh, in between N1 and N2 where you have uh, really discontinuities. So you cannot be hope better than, the, than this estimate. So we did also something with the uh, group of, uh, of Varso, the Guazdas, where you used uh, the aronson benino estimate. So we proved that you can still use a ronson benino estimate here, but you cannot do it in L infinity. You have to, put, to work in L2. And you have to manage to change the proof of a ronson benino to work in L2. And that was uh, the way to do it. But this costs an assumption, which is uh, F of zero equals G of zero. So recently I've seen a preprint, I don't know what is the status of the paper, by uh, Price and Zoo, where they found a way to make proof compactness, which is uh, uh, very nice and which is an archivix. You can find an archivix. I have a, a very simple proof which avoids all this and uh, uh, release this assumption. So now how do we make a link between the incompressible model and the, uh, and the compressible model? So the incompressible model as a geometric version, which is nice, which explains this uh, free boundary, which is behind, 
which is the following. So you think that a tumor is a domain omega, uh, that the cell density is one inside because you're incompressible and you have a free boundary outside it is zero. So you can think of the tumor and healthy tissue outside and you evolve the free boundary by the Darcy rule V equal minus grad P and you compute the pressure as I said at some point which is here means simply that you compute inside the set omega of t the equation minus Laplace p equal g of p and you put p equal zero at the pressure because outside the pressure is zero it's a, it's a reference pressure for the healthy tissue so the tissue here is growing g of p is positive so inside the tumor the, the, the pressure is increasing and invading the uh, the full the, the healthy tissue just by a flu boundary. So I've made many papers on that. There is a especially a, a, a version of it where the pressure on the boundary is not zero, but is proportional to the curvature of the domain. And for that, I refer to, to the papers by uh, Friedman, by Shui Escher, uh, by uh, Philip Maini, and, uh, and so on, and Oven Grub, and so on. So, so what does this uh, come, well, how is this connected to, the, to what I said so far? What is the connection between this model and the rest of the, of the talk? So the connection is, uh, is the following. If you take the compressible model, which we speak of, the produce medium equation, if you want, with the right hand side, if you assume that the pressure is n to the power gamma, and you look at what is the limit, gamma tends to infinity. So when gamma tends to infinity, when the pressure is below one, when the density is below one, the pressure will be zero. And because the pressure, I said that the pressure is controlled by the homostatic pressure, the cell density cannot be larger than one. So that's what happens in the limit. Either N is one and you don't know anything about the pressure or N is strictly less than one and the pressure is zero. So this is uh, the LHO uh, limit, uh, which is uh, an LHO is this guy, is a single, is a single person, uh, it's not two persons. In fact, uh, it's funny, his name was LA, he didn't like it. So he decided to append uh, the name of his mother, Show, to create the name LHO, uh, which was very uh, fashionable in the 19th century. Mitta Gleffler did the same. So there has been uh, uh, also a lot of works about these uh, questions. All this uh, was initiated by, uh, by uh, Benilan and Nick Bidda in the, in the, in the 80s. Uh, and uh, there are many papers uh, by, Gil, by Gil Kiros, uh, Vasquez, uh, Chen, another Chen, by the way, uh, Caffarelli, uh, Salsa, and, uh, on regularity of the free boundaries. So all this has been, uh, very active uh, using a free bond of okay, either semi-group theory. So Benilla and Big Dao, uh, that was uh, the, the 80s, used the semi-group theory to do that. Uh, Caffery Friedman used that uh, to prove the regularity of the free boundary. So this is a, a free boundary problem. Escher and Shui are more PDs about uh, what, how we can build solutions. Uh, there is another approach uh, by uh, Inwon Kim uh, which is based on viscosity solutions. You can try to study that uh, because there is a free boundary, there are singularities, uh, your viscosity solutions of PDs are exactly what, and I showed that, uh, by the way, there is an Hamilton-Jacobi equation behind that. So, uh, and one Kim did the job to, to, to do all this, and it's a quite technical issue to, to do it by viscosity solution. You use different spaces than when you do it with a PDs. And there is a, another point of view to study this limit, uh, which is a uh, Wasserstein distance, optimal transportation. And that's uh, what Dombrin, Mori, and Saint-Ambrosio are doing. Uh, and what they call the congestion problems. So their idea is not uh, from biology and tumor growth. It's more people moving and compacting in, uh, in places uh, because this, uh, this, uh, this theory is very well adapted to, to the case where you have uh, mass conservation. So this problem is very interesting and in, uh, you can see it from many, many point of view. Of course, my point of view will be connection with, by PDs with the rest of what I said. 
So the theorem uh, tells you the following. When gamma tends to infinity, you know that n infinity n gamma will converge strongly to n infinity, that the pressure will converge strongly to a p infinity. You have a control by one because n gamma, because the pressure is, is bounded. You have a control here by p, pm because I told you that it's, uh, you have a maximum principle in the ones for a single equation. And you have a weak convergence of the gradient of the pressure. But because I told you, you have BV estimates for this uh, 1D model, everything is simple. Because of the uh, BV estimate, N gamma converge strongly, I mean, grad P converge weakly, but you can pass in the limit, weak against strong, no problem. So it's quite easy, it's quite an exercise to pass the limit and show that the limit of that is this equation. So it's a simply the same transport equation except the relation between p and n infinity is quite loose because you only know that p infinity is zero when n infinity is less than one. But when n infinity equals one, you don't know what happens. So you can see it like a graph, which was a way to see it in the, uh, by uh, Benino and, 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 uh, and uh, Ibida. Uh, what is amazing, which makes it very strong, is that the weak solution of this problem is unique. So if you put the initial data which are convenient, co uh, compatible with this, the weak solution of this problem is unique. So not only it's a weak version which contains the limit of that, but it's also the only weak solution in the distributional sense. And to prove that, uh, you use method uh, like Olenek did for the plus medium equation and not the uh, entropy methods, which I would say are more natural nowadays. The real difficulty is not there. The real difficulty is not to establish uh, this weak limit, is to establish something stronger, which is that on the top of it, you can argue that either infinity equal one, and if n infinity equal one on a big set, then DTN is zero and you get here Laplace P. So you get either Laplace P equal G of P when n equal one, or n is less than one, the pressure is zero. So you expect that the pressure multiplied by Laplace P plus G of P equals zero. And so you would like to prove that. And uh, to prove that is to, if you want to make it the weak form, you can see that you have a grad P squared, grad P infinity squared. And if you want to generate a grad P infinity squared, you understand easily that it's the same thing, that to prove that the grad P is converging strongly. So the real difficulty is not to do that, is to prove that grad P gamma converge strongly to grad P. And that's the reason why Aronson Benino estimate is behind, because to prove compactness, of course, the best, the simplest way is to prove uh, second order estimates. So the way you prove uh, this uh, uh, complementarity condition is simply uh, is simple. You write the, uh, the, the, the equation of the pressure, which I said is, uh, is this one, and you notice that there is a gamma in front of it. And when gamma tends to infinity, you expect that this well term will disappear and this one will be zero. Uh, but the difficulty is that if you want to do that, you need a strong convergence. And to get a strong convergence is not easy. It comes from two things. One of the idea is aronson bellian estimate. But this is not, uh, this is not enough. aronson bellian will give you a compactness in, in, uh, of grad P in some spaces, but not that grad P squared converge to zero. So you need a little bit more, you need more integrability when you know that grad P, Laplace P is in L1 uh, from Benignan, Aronson Benignan, or control from below. Uh, you need a little bit more to prove uh, that grad P square converge to, to in L2. So one way to do it was uh, what we did Fernand, with Fernando Quiroz and Juan Luis Vasquez by regularizing uh, effect and an, an argument in uh, of functional analysis. Uh, we noticed recently with uh, Noemi David that in fact you have a uniform bound, uh, which is that grad P is in fact in L4. Uh, and uh, this L4 is the, the best, is sharp. It is the best uh, uh, regularity you, of grad P in LP that you can prove uh, for the porous medium equation. 
uniformly in gamma. If you want something uniformly in this power gamma, it is in L4. And the counter example to that is not the, 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 the Barnblatt solution, which is not the worst object that you can build. It's a, what is focusing uh, singularities where you have a hole that you are filling. And in that case, there is an old paper by Ronson uh, where you see that in the limit gamma tends to infinity, uh, the, the, the best you can do is a uh, right piece in L4. So this is true, and because of that, you are done. And now, what is the connection with the geometric form? If you put initially N0 as a uh, indicator function, you can prove that for all times, you have an indicator function, and that uh, you get uh, the, uh, as long as omega is smooth enough, because this set, you don't know what it is, but if it's smooth, you get the geometric, the geometric form formulation. And uh, this moving is showing you what happens. You have here a density which is less than one. The pressure is more or less zero. When you reach one with the cell density, you see that the pressure is building up. The pressure is creating uh, this free boundary, which is, uh, which is moving and invading the domain. So this is uh, the explanation of what we, we observe in these complex pictures is simply that you have zones where the pressure is zero. When the pressure is zero, you have just simply exponential growth, dTn equal g, uh, equal n uh, g of p. And when, uh, when you have built up, when n has reached one, then you get Laplace p minus Laplace p equal g of p, which is the solution you see here. So this, uh, this has the advantage that it explains what, uh, what, you, what you have to do. So is there any truth in this? Uh, let me show you experiments uh, that uh, come from a PhD student at INRIA in Paris, uh, where you see here uh, cell culture. You have here the center of the dish. You have here the number of cells, of, of tumor cells. And here you have a free boundary that you see here. Uh, on the right, you have the same picture, but in a different uh, situation where nutrients are not enough. So you have the free boundary, you have the cell density, which is more or less constant, and then you see that cell cells are dying in the middle, which is the counterexample I told you that you cannot explain that with what we said so far, because in the explanation we have, DTN can only be increasing. So it's not an explanation of that, but it's an explanation of that. So if you want to do that, you have to, to, to include uh, nutrients. So let's again go to the system. For the system, the only uh, case which is known for the limit gamma tends to infinity is uh, some theorem we did, uh, we did with Ferdika Pupa, Camille Pouchol, and, uh, and uh, Marcus Schmidtchen. It's in one dimension. Uh, and again, it is using the aronson benyon estimate. Again, aronson benyon estimate in L infinity cannot work. Uh, you need to work in weaker space. In that case, you need to work in L1. But the aronson beninans that's what is understood recently, in L1 is a bad, it doesn't work very well. It works very well in infinity. In, one D, it, in L1, it works only in 1D. So that's the reason why this is, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is in 1D. This is a beautiful paper that I love very much. Uh, I think many of you have uh, met Federica Buba at some point uh, in maybe in Oberwolfa, she was in Oberwolfa in many conferences. Uh, so maybe you don't know that uh, she passed away uh, last week uh, in Milano. She was uh, doing a PhD between Paris and Milano. She was in Milano. She had a terrible health accident. And uh, Milano has organized a, a website for her that you can find on the on the home page of the department, uh, the math department of Milano, uh, with uh, all what she did. She was supposed to defend her PhD uh, at the end of the month. So uh, just to conclude in, the, in a few minutes, uh, one of the difficult, when we want to go further, the first thing to do is either to, make, to put different types of cells or to put a nutrient. If you put a nutrient, the system, again, 
very, uh, very, very simple. You just add a parabolic equation to the equation we know. So you could say it's a system which two parabolic equations uh, which are controlled. The problem is the coupling is very bad. The coupling of uh, on the right hand side is very bad. It's one of these bad places where traveling waves are very complicated to even in simpler situations to study. And it makes things uh, much more complicated. So what we noticed uh, with uh, Fernando Quiros and uh, Juan Luis Vasquez is that the Elisho limit, the weak limit, you can prove it. You have all the estimate to prove it. We could not prove uh, the, the limit, the, the complementary condition. We, simply, we could prove it very recently with Noemi David, which I mentioned earlier. And one way to do that is to combine the aronson benino estimate in L2. Again, you cannot boot do uh, for technical reasons that I cannot explain here. It's a little bit technical. You, you cannot put use the aronson benino estimate in any affinity with the sub-solution as we did it. You have to work in L2. That's because of the bad behavior of C infinity in this string. In L2, you can integrate by parts. So, so you have more smoothness, more, more room to, to play. So you use Aronson Pinion in L2, and you use this uh, grad P estimate in L4. And that's enough to, to pass the limit. Uh, so this seems to be that it's a technical question that the mathematics is, uh, is behind. In fact, it turns out that it's much more than that. Uh, when you look now at pictures of what it means to put nutrients, what you see is that you get, of course, the traveling wave as we see, we have seen before, these, uh, these cells which are growing and, uh, and developing. Uh, but what you can find now that the cell density can, can decrease in the middle of the tumor. And you have here uh, the decay, and your cells are, are completely dead. And at the end, what you get is just uh, a proliferating rim with, uh, with, with a number of uh, tumor cells equal to zero in inside, or exponentially small. So this is uh, more realistic. This is what is a real tumor. And associated to that, you see that you have instabilities, which are created on the boundary of the tumor. And this is uh, also something you observe in, uh, in, in practice. This is connected to Turing instability. Uh, there is uh, this uh, last movie that I want to show you, which is connected to a chemical reaction, which do the same kind of, uh, of, uh, of patterns. Uh, this is uh, what is called uh, thermochemical reactions, uh, where you, you find uh, this, uh, these instabilities, which are very connected to, to what happens. Uh, there are other instabilities, just to conclude this talk, there are other instabilities uh, in, um, in this multiphase flow when you get, uh, when you use different motili motilities for the cells. So you use the, the again, a couple of, uh, of equations of hyperbolic, parabolic type but you have here different mobilities. This is a very complicated problem, which also occurs in uh, oil recovery. It's known for, for its difficulties. There is a recent paper on in one Kim on that, by the way, uh, for radial, nearly radial symmetric solution. It creates other uh, instabilities, uh, which are observed also in biology. I stop here. I wanted to to show you that the modeling of living tissue is a very active uh, scientific field now. There are many uh, science, there are different sciences going on in their mechanics and physics and biology, of course, and mathematics. Uh, it's full of nonlinear PDEs. And uh, it's, uh, it's one of these fields where mathematics is progressing with the other sciences. It's, it's uh, maybe, uh, uh, one of these rare exa examples uh, where everything in terms of physics and mathematics is written in terms of equations that we want to study now, which are difficult. And of course, beyond that, um, asymptotic analysis and uh, instability analysis uh, because of systems. When you have equations, it's, uh, you don't have these instabilities, but for system very quickly, you find instabilities which are uh, an interesting pattern of the, of the phenomena. I would like to thank all my collaborators. Uh, all this began with Fernando Quiros and Juan Luis Vasquez, which 
which are here, and me others join the, the, the team. Uh, I want to thank them, uh, all of them, very much, and I want to, to, to thank you also for your, for your attention. Well, uh, thank you, Bernard, for this beautiful talk. Um, so now I will invite the participants uh, to ask questions. So please, um, if you want to ask questions to Benoit, um, raise your hands. I don't see so many questions at the moment. Okay, let, let me, uh, maybe Benoit, let me ask you one question, which, um, you know, I mean, you, you showed us several, uh, several uh, systems um, uh, with non-linearities and um, uh, with um, propagation of fronts or, uh, or uh, interfaces, how much do the, these interfaces uh, depend on uh, the precise knowledge of these nonlinearities that you have in the equations, Mike? So you, uh, so, so most of them are, are, uh, are, are uh, Elisha type, uh, on the uh, free boundaries. So this, so they move with the velocity, which is the gradient of the pressure. So yeah. the free boundary moves like that. Uh, but in this, uh, in this model uh, of, uh, with different species, you have also internal layers, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. are more like, uh, I would say, contact discontinuities, maybe in hyperbolic world. Uh, which are moving with diff with uh, just uh, the uh, so by the way I don't know what is uh, how they move uh, this uh, interface uh, uh, certainly with the velocity there should be a common velocity at the interface which is created mm -hmm. uh, but I never check that but the free boundary is just the gradient of the pressure okay so all these models do that uh, yes but of course. Uh, can Iliad will not do that. Can Iliad is a, is a model which creates nature, so it creates many, uh, many instabilities and create uh, uh, these uh, this, uh, small islands everywhere, mm -hmm. which are moving with different rules because you have a fourth order uh, equation. So it's a different world. Yeah, so I see uh, you have uh, one more question. Okay. Let me see. Leonid? Mm. Yeah. Can you can you can you speak? Do you hear me? Yes, perfectly. All right. Uh, hi Benoit. Uh, thanks for great lecture. My my question is about instabilities particularly linearized analysis versus nonlinear instabilities. Uh, Safman Taylor is a lucky case when we have integrable system because of Laplace uh, equation, conformal invariance and all that. But when we are talking about instabilities, analogous instabilities in this system, there is no such luck. So uh, how far we can move from just linearized stability analysis, what do you envision for maybe weakly nonlinear analysis or fully nonlinear analysis? What kind of instability analysis analogous to Safman Taylor, how far you can go in this more complicated system which have no Oops. line Oops. integrability and conformal invariance? Oops, you are asking a very difficult question. I'm not aware of any uh, of any, uh, even a linearized uh, theory of instability, if, even in the simple case where you put nutrients, if mm -hmm. you put nutrients, you are coupling a parabolic equation with some kind of, uh, some kind of porous medium equation. I don't know how you can make a linear analysis of that. Mm -hmm. So, and because the interface is exactly at the singularity of the degeneracy of porous medium equation. 
I don't think there exists anything on that. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's completely open. Okay. That's good to know. I saw physicists doing linearized stability analysis on tissue migration when Celerico on viscous fingering kind of phenomenon. And we recently did something for weakly nonlinear, but here in this problem, it would be very interesting. Okay, yes. thank you very much, Benoit. Well, thank you for this, uh, for, for this idea. It's a very interesting problem, but very difficult, certainly. All right, we'll be in touch on that, yeah. All right, more questions? Do I see more questions? I think there is a question of Simone Di Marino. In the yes, yes. Ah. Yes, okay. I, I, I just write it, but uh, okay, I can ask it already. Uh, so thank you for a very nice talk. And so my question was actually linked to these stabilities. So this instability, of course, is, I think is linked with non-uniqueness. And so my question is uh, uh, if there is a preferable solution. So can it can, uh, be a selection principle for, for, a, for a nicer solution than others? Or do you think that uh, every, every one of those unstable solutions are in some sense natural? Uh, uh, thank you. It, uh, it's... Uh, it's it's a case where I think the solutions are still unique. It's, uh, it's what they call a, um, a transversal uh, instability, which means that if you look at the 1D wave, the 1D wave exists, traveling wave exists, and it is stable, no problem. If you look at it in 2D, now you create an instability in the transverse direction. And this has to do with... Uh, with uh, uh, with the system that you create in 2D, because you are not non-monotonic systems. So if you perturb it, uh, you can create negative eigenvalues. While you, in 1D, for some reason, the eigenvalues are positive, but it's not a peronphobenus, it's a little bit different. So it's not like Fisher KPP, it's uh, more complicated because of the system, the coupling, and that creates instability. So I think that case, it's uh, the solutions are, or whatever it means, the solutions are unique. So it's not that you jump from one to another one. It's something different. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, I, I, because I was thinking about, you know, rotational symmetry. If you start with rotational symmetry, then you break, break it. And so, mm -hmm. of course, there is no uniqueness in, the, in this sense. Oh, uh, uh, yes. Okay. So that's connected to that, that you, you, you create a spectrum and you, yes, and you change. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, no, thank in this you, sense, you're going, it's absolutely what you say. Yes, it's, it's the same. More questions? Uh, let me see. Um, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, this is Jim Nolan. Thank you. Um, I have a, a question which is more about modeling. So in the, in the case with nutrient uh, consumption, the, the nutrient doesn't depend on the pressure in any way? I, mean, I would imagine that uh, the, the pressure is uh, affecting the nutrient transport. Uh, yes, you're correct. I didn't put it. I made it very simple. I just said that nutrient is consumed. Uh, you are absolutely correct. Uh, in practice, pressure will compress the vasculature and will diminish the access to nutrients. So there is an interaction also between pressure and uh, mm. nutrients. Uh, I didn't put it because I wanted to, to simplify as much as possible sure, the, the, the model. And, uh, but you're absolutely correct, the interaction in both ways. So it's, uh, and uh, I think the best papers on that are the papers of Wise and uh, Lovengrub and Drasdo also, and these people. So then, then you find them uh, that in their papers. 
but it doesn't change so much the difficulties. Uh, this coupling is not, uh, doesn't change uh, so much uh, the difficulties. Uh, when you can do what I showed, you can do also the case that uh, the right hand side of the equation on C depends on the gradient of the pressure. Of the pressure. It's not the major difficulty here. But this is correct. It's, uh, the models are, are f the modeling is very interesting. There are many things uh, coming from uh, the physicists and uh, which are interesting in, this, uh, in these issues. More questions? Okay, so maybe there are no more questions. We uh, thank you again for this uh, beautiful lecture. And um, well, I'm going to see you uh, soon uh, more physically than on the waves. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank and, you. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye, Benoit.